Hey everybody, it's Tom with TKI. Uh, today we are in the shop and we want to go over some install videos of some of our half inch or in one inch offset axles. Uh, on some of the axles there are some instructions on the side of which direction they go. We just thought it'd be easier for everybody to see an instructional video on how to correctly install these. When ordering our axle, uh, you will receive one axle. Obviously this is a silver one inch offset. So you will receive this axle. On the website when you're ordering, uh, it will have a drop down box to select what model of sled that you have. Uh, with that, basically we're dictating which set of inserts come with the axle. So the nice part about our patented axle is that these inserts let you move the axle from say one sled to another. So if you have a 2012 through 2018 uh, Arctic Cat with dual rails and you have one of our offset axles and you go to a Gen 4 and in some cases a Polaris, you can actually take the axle with you and literally buy just a new set of inserts. So it's really handy, especially for you dealers. You can stock these and buy an assortment of axles. And now you've got, you know, anything from Polaris, Arctic Cat, and Skidoo all covered with one axle and multiple inserts. With our axle kits, we, uh, we offer six different kits. We offer a two wheel half inch offset axle, a one inch offset axle, a four wheel offset axle, uh, one inch offset, a 20 millimeter straight axle. This axle would be used for any of your stock sleds like your Polaris's, your Arctic Cat dual rails, and your Skidoo's. Uh, with this, there is also some spacers uh, that you can see on this axle shaft. Those spacers uh, will change between stock bearing size, the 6004 bearings, which are all of your stock bearing sizes for cat, uh, cat dual rail wheels, Skidoo, and then also Polaris. And then if you buy our wheels and you want just the stock wheels that are billet wheels, you take those spacers out because we run a bigger, more robust, stronger bearing, and they're a little bit wider. So you actually take that spacer out. We also offer a 25 millimeter straight axle. So this axle we actually intended for a lot of the rimshaw racers uh, that are having problems blowing or, uh, or breaking the uh, 20 millimeter straight axle. So we make a, a 25 millimeter, you can run our billet wheels or you can run a hard plastic wheel. Uh, another really good hard plastic wheel that we also offer is from Avid Products. So their eight inch and nine inch wheels will fit with our straight axle if you have rails to cut or that are cut for that. And then we also offer a pushback axle. So this pushback axle we have used for quite a few years. Uh, and this was intended for guys going from the 154s to the 156s or the 163s to the 165s. Uh, again, they have the spacers on the axle. So if you have a Polaris and you're going from a 155 to a 156, you can buy this, run your stock wheels uh, with the stock bearings because it is a 20 millimeter shaft. So you can actually use this. It actually, uh, the center line of the shaft is straight. So all we do, instead of putting it forwards towards the front of the sled, we put it to the back. So we actually gain another inch and a quarter, which on your track, it'll be about two and a half inches that you'll gain on track length. So we do offer that. All of these axles we offer in silver and black. Uh, we do not do custom colors in these axles. With our four wheel axles, as you can see, they are a little bit different axle or a insert design. They're much thicker than say our two wheel axle. So this is intended for the outer blocks that go on the outsides of the rails. These will slip through the rail. Uh, they'll slip through the rail into the inside axle block and then this will protrude from the opposite side of the rail so the outside block can be mounted up to this. Uh, works really well and again it's it's geared towards you dealers that want to carry axles and be able to sell for multiple sleds. 
the four wheel axle kits are intended for, uh, it seems like a lot of your crossover sleds and your trail sleds come with a four wheel axle on the back. Uh, not, I don't know if I've ever noticed a difference between the two and the four. Some guys say they do. Uh, we've tested four wheels on mountain sleds because that's how they, all of them used to come. And now with the whole weight craze, everybody's kind of gone to two wheels. So that's why we offer the four wheel. We still sell a lot of these axles and they, they work really well. So we are going to now do kind of an install. I won't install the entire kit, but we'll show you the correct direction the axle is supposed to face and also how the axle inserts work. So as you notice on the right, we have a half inch offset. So this half inch offset would be used if you're going from say, an eight inch wheel to a nine inch wheel. You know, there's one inch diameter difference. Uh, you divide that one inch in half for the radius and that's a half inch. That's, that's why we refer to half inch and one inch. The one inch would be used in cases of going from an eight inch to a 10 inch wheel uh, or a seven inch wheel to a nine inch wheel like what we do on the Polaris's a lot. <clears throat> so with this axle, uh, as you can see, I've got a set of inserts here for the Gen 4. The Gen 4 is the only one that you have to put the inserts in before putting them between the rails. As you can see on the inserts, there is a angle cut on one side and a radius cut on the, in the other side. Uh, this angle is actually meant for the half inch offset axle. Uh, we are clearancing this bolt that holds the axle shaft. So that angle has to clear that. The inserts will only fit in one way. So with these Gen 4 inserts, we can actually put them in the axle. And then when we go to install it, <coughs> you can put one side where the insert will fit into the rail. And then you may have to pull the rail apart slightly. And now your axle drops right in. So this is the correct mounting. Uh, the axle needs to be up and towards the front of the sled. In some cases, we can actually use an offset axle to also gain us on track length. So guys that are going say from a 154 to a 156 <clears throat> or a 163 to a 165, you could actually <clears throat> take the axle out, rotate it around, and now you've just gained yourself about three inches of more adjustment. It'd be about three to four inches of adjustment. So really simple setup, easy setup. On the one inch offset axle, we've got a 9 16 bolt on either side. Uh, after I slide the wheels on with the bearings, I leave these two bolts loose. I make sure to use good Loctite. Do not use Harbor Freight Loctite. No matter how cheap it is and how great you think it is, it is not. Use a good Loctite brand. Uh, I, over the years, have always used blue. Uh, in some cases, I do use red. If you really hate your buddies and you're selling a sled to them, use bearing retainer green. It's the greatest thing ever. Uh, so if you leave these two bolts loose, uh, then you can go ahead and actually install the bolt and the washer from the outside, so this will actually tighten up. On the one inch, I really like to get everything set, track tension set, and then I will snug up everything. These bolts can be tightened, uh, about 20 foot pounds is all they need. Again, use good Loctite on these bolts, the shaft bolts, and also the, uh, the axle block bolts. So again, I stress good Loctite, we've seen a not a lot of failures, but we have seen failures where guys say, well, I've been using the same bottle of Loctite for 15 years. It's time to upgrade to a new bottle of Loctite because as Loctite ages, it also dissipates some of the chemicals in it and it no longer works properly. On the half inch offset axle, you can see that the axle shaft and the center bolt for the axle shaft is here. Again, this will go the same way as the one inch offset axle. So this axle bolt needs to be up and forward. And again, we use this axle on, on regular occasions where you can actually turn it backwards. If you're out of adjustment, 
or putting a different track into a sled and you don't have enough adjustment and you want to run the bigger wheels, you can easily turn it backwards. But the, the axle shaft always has to be up from the center bolt. This is where your stock axle used to be. So again, half inch offset axle, bolt goes up and forwards towards the front of the sled. Axle inserts will fit in the exact same way. Adjusters, use your stock adjusters, tension the track. Uh, with the half inch offset axle, I've got a little trick that I'll show you how I get everything timed properly and we'll, uh, we'll set up and do that now. All right, I'm going to show you a trick, uh, what I use when installing wheels on a half inch offset axle. Uh, again, we've got our good Loctites. We've got blue, we've got red, and we have the infamous, I hate you my friend, green. Uh, again, this works really well on lug nuts on trucks that you sell to a buddy that you never want to see again because guaranteed he will never speak to you again after using this. So if we take our half inch offset and we remove the two outside bolts, uh, these are a 5 16 socket head cap screw, so you will need a 5 16 Allen wrench. So if you remove the outside blocks, now you have your, your axle shaft. So we can take our nine inch wheels, they will slide right on, on both sides of the axle. And the way that I do it is, luckily I've got two big blocks of aluminum that are the same height. Obviously you don't want to do it on a plastic cart like I am, I am here, I'm just doing it for display. Um, but once you get your two wheels put on, then you can take your one axle block and slide it on uh, the outside of the shaft. Uh, from there, you can use your blue or your red Loctite, put it on your socket head cap screw, and you can actually tighten this down. Uh, both of these axle bolts, I like to do about 20 foot pounds. So we're just gonna snug that one up. So now that bearing and wheel is, that bearing and wheel is tight. So now we can come over, grab our other axle block, slide it on, and again, you can screw this bolt in until it's just snug. That way it's easy. So if you take our axle blocks, blocks the, uh, they are actually flat on the bottom for this reason. So if you take it, you can actually time your axle now. So both of the flat parts are sitting flat on the top of these blocks. So you could use even like a two by six piece of wood usually will get you close enough. Or something that you know is the same height. And so now that we know that axle is uh, flat, we can come back in here. And at first you'll have to kind of go slow so you don't get any twist. But if you put your palms down, and start snugging down the axle block, you can see that the axle wants to twist a little bit. So if you keep going, it, sometimes it is easier to have two friends do this. So my assistant Jen will help me so the cart doesn't move. But if you can, it may be easier to have somebody hold down on the blocks while you tighten the Allen wrench. Um, it works really well. Uh, that's how we get it timed. Uh, and that's how we can make sure that when you drop this in the rear skid, the axle slots will line up from one side to the other. So with that, now we've got our axle bolts tight. We've used good Loctite. Uh, we've bought in obviously the best wheels on the market. Uh, we run the bigger 6205 bearings. And now we're ready to install it into the rear skid of the sled. So this process will only be used on the half inch offset axle uh, and on the two wheel axle, uh, just because we can't get access to these bolts because they're covered up by the rails. So that's why we do this process. Uh, the straight axle, you don't have to worry about that. Push back axle. And then obviously we went over the one inch offset axle uh, that we leave all the bolts loose until the track is tensioned properly and then we go back and tighten all the bolts down to 20 foot pounds.